Hello and welcome to the Gentleman Scholars Club. Today our topic is duplicates in your wardrobe. Now what do I mean by that? Duplicates are essentially items that appear the same to those who aren't experts in classic menswear, but you know that differ in a small detail or in several ways from one another. They might have a single stylistic detail that makes them different, or they might have several features that make them variations on a theme rather than being exactly the same. However, for our purposes, we'll call them duplicates. And we'll talk today about how duplicates happen as well as what to do about them. So why would you have duplicates of items in your wardrobe? Let's say you want to get a navy shirt. Now when I started looking into classic menswear and being interested in it, I assumed that I could just have one of each thing. So if I wanted a navy shirt, I would buy one navy shirt in cotton and that would be it. It would fill that niche in my wardrobe. However, as time went on, and like most of you, you'll experience the same sort of thing, you realize that you like certain certain aspects of style, that right? you have certain preferences. So I realized over time that the cutaway collar, which I have here, you can see it's angled back, it's kind of small, was not my ideal. I also like to have larger collars, like a one-piece collar or maybe a button-down collar. So I would go out and buy a navy shirt in a button-down collar format or in a one-piece collar format. Um, and each of these would fill a certain situation button-down collar might be more suitable for work, to be relaxed and kind of present an everyday sort of appearance, whereas the cutaway collar or one-piece collar were more aggressive, they were more showy, and so they might be suitable for vacations or for evenings out. So there'll be two different niches there for those garments. As I looked at this, I also realized that my first choice had white buttons. White buttons makes the shirt kind of casual. It says to me, uh, you could not wear this with a suit, for example, unless you were trying to dress it down. So if I wanted to wear a navy shirt in a more formal setting, I would have to go out and buy one in uh, with black buttons or with dark buttons, something more muted. There's another opportunity to get a navy shirt. Again, quite similar, single difference, collar style, button detail. Right? So that's how duplicates can happen. Some of these can be mistakes, and I'll show you one where that was the case. Uh, I tend to like only light gray sport coats or jackets. I find um, darker grays to be too sober, too business-like, and so I don't need to wear those for my work, and therefore I prefer to have uh, lighter gray. Um, and mainly in the winter, not in the summer, because gray to me is more of a cold season color. Uh, so this is a gray flannel that I purchased from Bergen Berg a few years back. And uh, I like the color. I had one from Suit Supply actually before this that was too small. I bought something undersized. So buying it in a larger size as you change shape or as you realize you were going too tight before uh, may be a reason to duplicate things. But this is one that I bought a few years back. And it's a gray flannel, three roll two, three buttons, third button pressed under the lapel. Uh, and it has a jetted pocket, just a single slit here, because it's part of a suit. And you can see here there are, there are trousers also that go with that. And uh, didn't think that would bother me, but it did. Right? It seemed too formal to me. It looked unusual. So I wore it mostly as a sport coat. And to have that single jetty pocket, uh, the single jet as a pocket rather than a patch was problematic to me. And so I wasn't 100% satisfied with it, uh, which led me to purchase essentially the same thing again, but with slight variations that I liked. Uh, so this is uh, almost the same thing from Spear and McKay. Colors are quite similar. This one is a twill. This one is a regular flannel, I guess. It's modeled. This one's also modeled, but under the twill. This one's slightly lighter. This is a bit heavier. Um, but this one had some features that I prefer over the Bird and Burt. I'll give you a look at that. So this one has patch pockets, first of all. You can see there. And to me, that's a desirable thing for informal jackets to have that patch pocket. It is only a standard two button. There's not the third button here. Uh, but I don't know if that is a deal breaker for me. Uh, it's possible, of course, that I could go out and buy it again with a three roll two format. Uh, but for now, I'm satisfied with this. And I think it's an improvement on the other one for various reasons. So upgrading your wardrobe to suit the, what you, to suit your, the, the details that you like, to suit what you like in terms of style, is another reason to duplicate things. And you may also upgrade um, in terms of branding, right? Or 
uh, just getting higher quality items. Um, let's say you started off with a jacket from Suit Supply, a navy jacket, navy sport coat. Uh, that might be fine, but if you tried a ring jacket, you tried a jacket from the Armory, which is you know four to five times more expensive, if you discover that you like the fit even better. And so you, you save up your money and you buy the same jacket from them. So that's another reason to duplicate items, upgrading. Uh, this doesn't mean that you shouldn't buy the cheaper item to begin with, because you always learn from trial and error, you learn from experimentation. If you had bought the more expensive item and you realized later that you don't like that style, or there's something wrong with it, you're still out of pocket, but for even more, and you have to resell it anyway. So it's better to experiment actually on uh, less expensive items until you sort of develop your eye, develop your taste, develop your interest. So if you're starting out with classic menswear, I rec would recommend going that route and buying the best you can afford, but perhaps not the most expensive. And then as you really understand what you like, you can upgrade. And certainly we are not static and so our tastes always evolve. Maybe when you're 50, your tastes will be different than when you're 30. When you're 60, you might have different tastes when, than when you're 40 or 50. Right? So there's always a chance that you will rotate things out of your, your garments or out of your wardrobe. And nothing is set in stone. However, don't be afraid of getting duplicates and going through that trial of error, trial and error period and experimenting because that's the way that you develop your style taste and develop your, uh, your uniform, uh, develop your characteristic style. If you make mistakes, you can sell items, as I said earlier, on eBay, on Grailed, on the style forum, buy and, buy and sell forum. Um, or you can just keep it in your rotation and wear it for different purposes, as I said earlier. Maybe you'll you know, use one as a, sort of a banger jacket that you wear around when you go to the grocery store in the summer. Maybe you have one that you wear when you walk the dog in the winter. Right? So you can keep those, you can certainly keep those in your rotation. Uh, but there's also opportunities to move them out and get something new. The bottom line is, as I said, uh, duplicates are perfectly fine and they're a key part in learning who you are stylistically and what you prefer. So I hope you found that useful. Please like the video and follow us at the Gentleman Scholars Club for more similar content. Thanks for viewing.